Liverpool have beaten Wolves at the Molyneux 2-1. Thank God. That is a result that I do not want to ever talk about again, ever, if I'm being completely honest. That was that was one of those games that you go down, you take the result. We will never speak of that ever again. That that was really, really hard to watch. There were so many good things uh, and there were a lot of bad things as well. It was a really mixed performance and we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. I'm going to go over the players kind of one by one. Give my thoughts on uh, on how they played, what they got up to, you know, in this game, because there was a lot going on. There was a lot going on. I thought Wolves Wolves played very well, especially in the first half. They came out, you know, bouncing, kind of as you'd expect them to be. You know, they're at home. They haven't really kicked off in the Premier League so far this season. They're wanting to get their first win, and they come out bouncing against us. Of course, it, it made sense. And we handled that, I thought, pretty, pretty well. You know, kind of very controlled, not as uh, like not having as much possession in the first half, but kind of being able to keep Wolves away from our goal, you know, keep them at arm's length, you know, really holding them off and restricting them to, you know, just poor shots and, you know, really low conversion chances, really. And other than that, in the first half, like from a Wolves perspective, I thought it was a pretty solid performance. After about 20 minutes, you know, we kind of come into the game we get, you know, we, we start making some attacks, you know, I think that Sobers like chance will be, will be one that we look back on and think about, you know, it really, we had chances to make this game, you know, easier than it was uh, for ourselves, but ultimately we did not do that. We made it as difficult as humanly possible. And that's why I'm happy that we never, we will never talk about this game again. And we got the result and the three points. And that, that just makes me so happy because my, my, there were moments in this game where I was really, really scared. Just... When we went 1-0 up, we just seemed to kind of switch off. We just looked so... I know Slot wants to build up slowly, you know, and pass it out from the back. But at the, in, the, in the first half, of, of, sorry, in the second half after we went up, I was just kind of thinking to myself, you know, which sort of lackadaisical, like, just walking around, pondering, you know, passing the ball around, not really being very intense, kind of. And I know we want to rest on the ball and I know we want to do that, but there just didn't really seem to be a lack of... There just really seemed to be a lack of, you know, let's go and get another goal. You know, let's let's put ourselves ahead. You know, let's cover ourselves from from a Wolves goal. And that does happen in the second half, sadly. You know, really not sure who to blame for that, to be honest, because Kanate leaves it for Alisson. Alisson leaves it to Kanate. Just a complete kind of miscommunication there. Who do we really blame? It's hard to say. It's hard to say. And ultimately, we've conceded a goal and it didn't cost us. Thank God. Uh, and we can move on from that and uh, and live our lives. And that's what I'm just most happy about is that we got the result after a really kind of average performance, maybe maybe less than average performance from us, really. You know, I'm going to go into the players now. Uh, I'm going to start off with uh, a few uh, fantastic players that I thought really kept us in this game where we weren't playing as well as, you know, we know that we can under Arnie's slot. And I think one of those players was of course Ibrahima Kanate, who I think actually should have got Man of the Match. Gravenberg getting Man of the Match, which obviously is hard to, de de to debate, you know, because Kanate makes the mistake, as Sky seemed to Sky seemed to label it very clearly as a Kanate mistake, that kind of, uh, that little slip up at the back there with Alisson. But, you know, I thought Kanate kept us in that game. Some of his tackles, when Trent was isolated, coming in to help him, moving across, aerially and obviously the goal I thought he was absolutely fantastic absolutely fantastic and really in my opinion is becoming one of the best center backs in the league really you know competing with you know we're talking competing with a very few number of center backs here you know just being fantastic and you know what's most important is that consistency doing it week in week out can you play good away can you play good at home every week and this guy can do it. And that's exactly what we need. You know, our defense has been so, over the past couple of years, it's been so in and out. You know, we've had so many different centre-back pairings. But to finally have Kanate and Van Dijk just set in stone for now, you know, until one of them maybe gets injured, we shall see. Hopefully Slot and the new, uh, the new fitness department are kind of working on that. And it seems to be working well so far. Really just waiting for more games to try and understand more and more about Arna Slot. And I think we, we actually learned a lot today. But Kanate was one of my definitely contenders for Man of the Match. Gravenberg absolutely deserving it, though, in my opinion. Equally as good. But in my opinion, Kanate would have slightly edged it. I want to talk about uh, Dominic Sobers like Someone I think didn't have a very good game. And that's absolutely fine because, you know, players have bad games and, and that's okay. But I thought today he was really, really poor. 
almost kind of so poor that at some points it felt like, you know, it felt like we were playing with 10 men, you know, you'd give him the ball uh, and he just, the, his capacity to lose it sometimes is really, really frustrating. You'll see him kind of do like a little twizzle. You'll, he's trying to be fancy and he'll just give it away every time. And it was the most frustrating thing ever. And yeah, that just really frustrated me in that game. And I'm... I'm 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 happy for the guy. He's getting his starts and he really he really I think needs to start kind of performing because it's been a while now since we've had a good Sobers like performance. It seems like kind of at the end of every game now I'm sort of talking about him and how he hasn't, you know, been as good as he could have been. He's misplaced passes, he's been sloppy, and that was the case today. And obviously that missed chance that missed chance uh, at the end of the first half, that has to go in. And a lot of people, I think, are getting on him uh, about that. But as much as I, uh, as much as I, as angry as I was after that, and you know, seeing the save that Johnston makes, I'm thinking to myself, you know, all you can really hope that your striker, your player, does there is make contact and gets it on target. And my my, did he make contact? That was a very powerful shot, and it's just it's on target, and you know, inch to the left, inch to the right, it's in. But Johnston comes up, comes up with this just wonder save and keeps it out, which I think it is because ultimately when it's that close range, just get it on target and make make contact, you know, good contact. And that's what Sobazai did there. But yeah, ultimately a really poor performance from him, really underwhelming. And I think it's kind of at the point where you've got to be asking yourself, maybe Curtis Jones comes into this 11. You know, does Curtis Jones deserve to be put in that 10? Not particularly inspiring in his, in his cameo, in my opinion. I thought he was fine. Completely average, but you know, does he deserve to come in? Because Sobazai, in my opinion, has just not been offering us enough. Virgil van Dijk, as imperious as ever, you know, just aerially, just I feel so safe. I feel safe and warm when the ball comes into the air towards Van Dijk. We just you just know nothing's gonna happen. No, no chance. It's it's gone. It's it's into our one of one of our sixes or a or a left back. You know, it's just it's dealt with and it's just so reassuring to have him at the back there. Canate similarly as well. Both just so capable of winning those aerial duels. It feels really rare that they lose out on one, particularly from corners as well, because you know, I feel like we had, Wolves had a fair few corners there and I was never worried at all. Canate and Van Dyke dealt with it perfectly. And I was I was very happy with Van Dyke's performance as a whole. I thought maybe Maybe behind a few other players in terms of man of the match, but, you know, a very, very solid performance, particularly with the ground jewels as well. I thought he was very, very solid. McAllister and Gravenberge becoming a real, you know, kind of talismanic pair in this side, you know, just so integral to the way that we want to play football. And I was so happy with the way they played today. I thought McAllister, probably worse than Gravenberge, not really in competition for man of the match, but as a pair, they work so well together. And I'm so happy that we finally have a set pair that we play week in week out you know and really have that chemistry and kind of seems like they can't really lose the ball when they get on the ball that's just really assuring feeling to have also I thought Trent Trent very solid as well you know that yellow card I was really angry about that in the first half you know he kind of kicks the ball away you Trent you know that that is gonna you know you know that's gonna be a yellow card he just doesn't really seem to care and you know he's he's very capable of being a bit of an idiot sometimes We'll excuse it, of course, because it didn't really cost us anything. But, you know, come on, we've got to we've got to be a bit more disciplined than that. We know we're going to get yellow cards when you kick the ball away like that. And, you know, the whole league really has to adapt to how strict this kind of new carding system is, to be honest, because, you know, if you tap the ball, anything, you you just don't want to give the re... The re? The re? You don't want to give the referee impetus to kind of give you anything, because if you do, they probably will. And that's what we saw today. Seven minutes in, I was I was worried because you know, Bellegard he was running at Trent. They their game plan was so obviously just send it to Bellegard, try and get in behind Trent, and they did that a lot. But Bellegard seemed kind of kind of not like he really wanted to take on Trent sometimes, which I thought kind of was good for us because there was a lot of times where he was isolated with him on the wing, and he just didn't really go for it. He just passes back, which was a bit confusing. But ultimately, though, just to wrap up, a really a good performance, a good performance, a good performance. I'm happy we got the result. Uh, nothing to write home about. Nothing to write home about as a performance, though. We were fine. We went to the Wolves. We got the result. A Wolves that probably aren't what the uh, the league table actually suggests. You know, this is not a bottom. Uh, this is not a bottom team. This is not a team that's. I'd imagine not going to get relegated. And we did fine. We did absolutely fine. Wolves had a game plan. 
We adjusted to that. We probably should have scored more goals than we should. Wolves should not have scored a goal. So they got quite lucky there and they had us, you know, a bit scared after that. But ultimately it was it was fine. And we did look controlled, but I thought just sometimes a bit lackadaisical in our build up, you know, kind of expecting that we'll just go and win, you know, when we're only one goal up and that's that's kind of what frustrated me about that game, I'm gonna be honest. Just our kind of naive kind of well to me it seemed like kind of naive build up slow. And, you know, just kind of assuming that we're going to win the game in some of the body language of the players, you know, when we're 1-0 up, it kind of, it angered me. And 2-1 up as well. But it's good to see that they at least have confidence in themselves to see the game out. And that's what they did. So respect to them. And, you know, if you enjoyed that video, let me know in the comments down below your thoughts on the game. A bit of a mixed one. You know, really curious to see what you think about that. That was, God, don't well, After today, we're never going to speak of it ever again. So let's just look, get out of your system now. Maybe check out some of the videos I've put on screen, hopefully. Hopefully I'll remember. And uh, I'll see you next time.